Welcome to Movie Life Crisis. Join us as we watch the best movies from 30 years ago. When adventure calls. Hello. Don't put it on hold. Bearing treasure? $20 million! The map is real! The map is on fire! Billy Crystal. We're having a great time. I was almost killed today. Daniel Stern. Something's coming. And it's definitely coming from that direction. John Lovers. Ah! And Jack Palace. Ah! You thought I was dead, didn't you? City Slickers 2. Rated PG-13. At theaters June 10th. You thought I was dead, didn't you? <laughs> oh, man. Jack Palace. Dude, we're back. Isn't that awesome? City Slickers 2, The Legend of Curly's Gold, We've made Movie f- Life Crisis Season 4, Episode 15. Full circle. The original City Slickers, Movie Life Crisis Season 1, Episode 1, our very first podcast episode ever. That, full circle. It's fantastic. I think I had 13 quotes for that one. <laughs> I, got a, I, got a, I got a lot of quotes for this one, too. I stuck some of the quotes into scenes, man. It's um, I don't know if it's Billy Crystal improvising or John Lovitz improvising <laughs> or it's just Lowell Gans and Babalu M- Mandel being awesome at writing, yeah, yeah. but... Uh, and you love freaking Billy Crystal's like uh, one liners. Oh yeah, his setup and delivery is totally Jerry Horn, and it uh, yeah yeah it's fantastic. We're back. We're doing the sequel to the first movie we ever did, City Slickers, which is cool. I'm, I'm not going to go back and listen to the episode. Uh, I, I actually I know a couple people who have reached out and said like, yeah, I'm st- I like the podcast. I started from the beginning. I was like, don't do that. Why? Start just come up to where we're at. <laughs> Don't go back and don't listen gotcha. to us improving. Don't watch the junior high games. Right. Come right to the pro level. Right. Pro. That's funny. Pro. pro in quotes. Right. I love City Slickers 1. We've established that yeah. when we did that episode. Do you think had we not done City Slickers 1 and we missed it, we still do City Slickers 2? Uh, I don't know. I really like City Slickers 2. I do too. But it's a great year of movies, so I don't know if we would have. Yeah. I don't think there's any way we would have missed the original City Slickers because that's one that you and I both love. No, I'm saying like say we started in 92. Oh, like a year yeah, later. Yeah, we started and we missed it. Do we still do City Slickers 2? Can we can we catch the original City Slickers on Patreon in that case? <laughs> yeah, we Like can. we did 1990 yeah, dude, stuff on great, uh, Patreon. It's a great movie. Yeah, dude, probably not. I mean, we talked about this because we didn't do Die Hard 2. We haven't gotten to Die Hard 1 on Patreon, and we will do that. We didn't do Die Hard 2 on their main feed. When Die Hard 3 comes around, we – I guess we'll do it. Die Hard with a awesome Vengeance and we is like my it. jam. That's what I'm saying. I like that one. It's, so. it's better than dude, the Dude, we're making it all up. Yeah. It, it's all made up, and the points don't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just like, what, dude, what was the name of that show? Uh, Whose line, line is it anyway? anyway? CZ loves it. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's freaking great. Is it still on or she's watching old stuff, old reruns? Yes. <laughs> it's not God, Drew Carey no. anymore. It's and, uh, it's not, it's not Ryan Stiles. And, no, I, Ryan Stiles is still there and Colin Mockery. I was going to say, just freaking 25 years later, those guys still oh, and, improv and, and songs. Dude, they're still so funny. Wayne Brady uh, shows up. They tour with that and I would absolutely go and see them do that live. Absolutely. Because those guys crack, crack me up. Dude, give us a synopsis for City Slickers Deuce. Okay, The Deuce, The Legend of Curly's Gold. Mitch Robbins, played by Billy Crystal, back in the saddle again. This time he discovers a treasure map that leads him and his friend, Phil Daniel Stern and his estranged brother, Glenn John Lovitz on a wild, wild west to find Curly's hidden gold. That's all it said. (laughs) That sounds about right. Yeah, it's pretty close. I I saw, I was trying to watch some uh, behind the scenes footage because there's not a lot about this movie because it didn't do as well as the first one. And I saw Billy Crystal talking about doing like a press junket and you could tell the that he, he didn't like at all the questions. He, we go to the hunk it. You could tell he didn't like the questions the guy was asking because he's like, really? You're that guy? Because the guy was like – one of the questions was like, hey, I, I noticed that your Mets hat, like it looked kind of different in some scenes. Did you have like a lot of those? And he's like, really? Is that – you're you're that guy? You had to oh, that it was on the left lapel. I don't like this movie anymore. <laughs> Like, and he was trying to be funny about it, but you could tell he really was pissed he off was, at the guy. Yeah, that's probably the 15th person that he's had to sit there and answer questions. And he's like, I don't know, two. He's like, how much time is there left in this? Uh, <laughs> I, but one of the questions the guy asked him about was about alternate movie titles for other countries, which is a great question because I love that too. Yeah. And he said that City Slickers, the original City Slickers in France was called like Life, Love, and Cows or something. <laughs> And he was like, why would they – who would want to go see that? The life, love, and cows. And then he did a whole – dude, and Billy Crystal did a whole bit in French where he was talking about should we go see life, love, and cows. <laughs> was it real French? <laughs> I don't speak French, but it sounded good. Uh, jamba, jamba, uh, jamba, jamba. <laughs> dude, so that's – all right. 
So, do you remember the movie? So this would be Life, Love, and Cows. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Uh, remember uh, the Julia Roberts, uh, Hugh Grant movie where he yeah. poses as, what movie was that? Notting Hill, maybe? Notting Hill. Notting Hill. Yeah, where he poses as the guy from one of the magazines and he has to ask questions. And uh-huh. he has to sit there and ask them all questions. <laughs> and then I realize how long those people have to actually sit there when they go to yeah. the honk it. And w- they go to the honk it. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to sit there and answer all those questions. So I can only imagine on question set number 16 and Billy Crystal's just like, really? Yeah, and they'll do like – those press junkets, they'll do like nine hours of interviews. And so you know on hour six when the like nine millionth person from the freaking Hoboken Auto Journal yeah. is like, what was it like working with Daniel Stern? And he's like, I don't know. Great. Just – Shut up. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they are getting paid a lot of money to do that, but... Dude, know. they are. It's the same thing with basketball players. Like, I don't like having to talk to you. It's like, all right, we'll go play basketball for free at the park then, or if, or shut up about it, because... <laughs> I'm just here, so I won't get fined. a year. <laughs> <laughs> that's how Billy Crystal should yeah. answer. If I have to answer stupid questions uh, for money, that sounds like having a toddler, except <laughs> with money, so... <laughs> Why? That's my current Why? situation. Yeah. Why? Why are dogs brown? Uh, go find your mom and let's ask her. Oh, man. This movie, $40 million budget, $72 million gross. It's number 33 on the year, right behind, wait for it, Time Cop. <laughs> Which time we Time Cop. Time Cop on this podcast. That was probably the most press that movie's gotten in a very long time. Um, that's, but we went in. Yeah. We John Claude Van Damme, JCVD. JCVD. Um, dude, I was from reading from Brussels, an article. Belgian waffle. <laughs> I was reading an article about how uh, when they realized that Speed was going to be dropped the same day as City Slickers 2, yeah. Bill, uh, Billy Crystal was like, please put it to back to August where you were originally going to release it. And they were like, no, no, we released the first one in June. We're going to release this one in June. This is going to it's going to be awesome. We're going to do the thing with yeah. the stuff. And then it made no money. Well, not no money, not, but not as much money. Not, not as much. Um, and that's because it was up against. Uh, I saw this in a movie about a bus that had to speed around the city, keeping its speed over 50. And if its speed dropped, it would explode. I think it was called bus that the bus that down. couldn't slow down. Yeah, you don't want to go against the bus that couldn't slow down. That's uh, uh, Yeah, that that shit that was way fun. Was was huge. And that's, like, um, I, dude, that's before, it's not because it was like Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock either. No, no, nobody knew who they right. were. I mean, they knew it's who just, Keanu Reeves awesome were, but movie. he wasn't like... It was just yeah, it was freaking badass. Yeah. The original, so this one forty million made seventy two, not quite two x. That's not good. Right. That's a break even or even lose money depending on the marketing budget. Yeah. The original twenty six million grossed one hundred and eighty million, Jeez. so they made it for half, and it made twice as much money. So it was uh, it was way better, and you can see why. Really, they didn't spend that much more money, given that uh, presumably all the cast got raises coming back. Yeah, but they just. It just didn't do as well. It made half as much money. Dude, speaking of the cast, did you remember uh, Bruno Kirby not being in this? I felt like he was in it and also John Lovitz. I don't know why. When I started watching it, I was like, oh, snap. No, I remember that it was John Lovitz instead of Bruno Kirby because I was trying to figure out because the apparently like – because you know Bruno Kirby and uh, Billy Crystal were like super tight. They did Harry Met Sally. Right. They did City Slickers 1. They were like legit friends. friends. And then they just had a fallen out at some point and I was trying to figure out why and – Bruno Kirby died, and Billy Crystal really has never talked about it. Well, but it's I did read something a lot, like a lot of this stuff says that like Billy Crystal kind of like I was like I don't want to work with him, and I don't want anyone else to work with him either. But I couldn't ever find any reason why. Well, uh, so two things that I read: I read the thing that they had a fallen out, but I also read that Bruno Kirby was getting injections every single day uh, on yeah. the first movie because he was allergic to horses. Um, so when it came back around, they actually asked him. Or the studio asked him, rather, not uh, Billy Crystal. The studio asked him, and he said, um, I don't know if it's worth it because I got to do shots every day. I don't think I want that. Yeah. And they were like, how about John Lovitz? And that, I mean, that worked. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know which of those is the true story, and we're probably not going to find out unless Billy Crystal decides to tell us. And even then, we'd only have his side. But yeah, I know he just, they just stopped working together. And then Bruno Kirby's career really kind of like tailed off a little bit. Yeah, which stinks because I like that guy. It sucks because he's really good yeah. and he was freaking great. And Harry Met Sally, he's great. And this one, Harry Met Sally, available on Patreon, by the way. <laughs> and uh, obviously, City Slickers season one, episode one. But yeah, I, and I, I like Bruno Kirby, but I 
when you have John Lovitz instead, it's hard for me to be upset about that. Right, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm saying. That was it's like point. we talked about the first movie. It was supposed to be Rick Moranis instead of Daniel Stern. Rick Moranis dropped out because his wife got cancer or whatever. Dude, I love Rick Moranis, but I'm not complaining about Daniel yeah, Stern because yeah, he's know, freaking amazing. He's fantastic. Daniel Stern. Yeah. He didn't want to do it either, by the way. He wanted to start. He was like, I didn't want to do sequels anymore. I, I he just yeah. come off of Home Alone two, and because John yeah. Hughes, he was like, "Here's a, I'm going to give you a script. I want you to direct it," and he was excited. Uh, but then when Bruno Kirby couldn't do it or didn't do it with this sequel, uh, he was like, "I can't let my friend Mitch down, or sorry, Billy Crystal down." Um, yeah, and he came in and did it, which I'm again, I, you're never going to complain about having extra Daniel Stern. No, definitely not because he's – dude, because you can tell that Billy the Chris, Billy Crystal and John Lovitz are comedians. Like they're not – Yeah. Like they're, they're they're pretty good actors, but you can tell they're comedians. Like they're just – that's what they do. They just are funny. That's why they're – that's why they're on screen. But Daniel Stern is just like – he's a real actor <laughs> and he's also hilarious, he's so but he's funny. hilarious. Like his character is hilarious. Like he could oh, not be hilarious for a bit and be this like serious actor in between him. He's, I don't know. He's so funny, dude. Did you find any awards? Uh, no, I didn't find any awards. Uh, and this is the last sequel. Did you find any or, any more sequels or spinoffs? Uh, no. Nothing. I was kind of surprised they didn't do – I mean I know this one didn't do that well, but I'm kind of surprised they didn't go back to this property again because so many shitty movies have had like TV shows right. and animated series. Especially and like, how they left it open at the end. Yeah. And I was even thinking, I was like, all right, all these guys now are the age that Jack Palance was in City Slickers 1. It's like we could freaking totally do City Slickers 3 yeah. with Stern, Lovitz, and Billy Crystal. They're all in their mid-70s, and then their kids could be with them and their grandkids. And like, I, I, like it could be hijinks. We like, should totally do that. Lowell Gantz and Bob Lou Mandel are not around anymore, but like – Somebody should we do could, it. We could totally – Billy Crystal could write it. Absolutely he could. I think this one should be from the, um, from the viewpoint of Phil – from Daniel Stern, and he can do a voiceover, so it gives us that Wonder Years feel, too. I know you love the voiceover. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, Lowell Gantz and Bob Lou Mandel are both still alive. They're just not doing, they haven't done a movie in 15 years. Yeah. To be specific. Yeah, dude, I would love it if the third one was like Phil's life actually turned out okay, because in both of the first movies, he was a sad sack. <laughs> it's because of our Maybe he uses though. the gold and he freaking does something. Ah, God. I really missed the. This movie is funny because they're funny and Lowell Gantz and Bob Lou Mandel are funny, but it's not funny like the first one. It's really not. It's <laughs> If eight were people, I'd be China. There's nothing at that level for me. I'm sure I'll answer. It's his night to be with the other escaped Nazis. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's not – There's I have a bunch of quotes, but there's not a and lot. And he's freaking banging Lisa Simpson in the bread aisle. It was in his car. <laughs> oh, my God. She, because I'm her boss, we have a health plan. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, the man. first one is freaking genius yeah it's way good I, do you remember when you saw this i don't remember uh, i know i've seen it a bunch not as much as the first one but i don't remember No, i definitely saw it, it a bunch and i know i had it on the like a 550 bin dvd type thing was it one of the ones where you could get both of them in the same case no this one's separate because that's how i watched it i found the dvd and then i re i didn't realize this my computer has a dvd slot on the front <laughs> as a DVD burner right in the front of the computer didn't even know uh, you've, you've got an antique I do, I do so that's how I watched it and it was just that one and um, nice. she felt blurry yeah. <laughs> I saw a 4K upscaled trailer yeah. uh, and it was crystal clear but I couldn't find the movie in that clarity I don't, I don't want to see John Lovitz in 4K you didn't want to see <laughs> Jack Palance in 4K either because yeah. that's what he was in the trailer yeah, man. I think I must have. I don't think I saw this in the movies because I would have been junior high, high school, yeah. and I don't. But I probably rented this as soon as it came out because we were like my family every Friday was like, "Let's go rent movies because we don't want to talk to you guys all weekend." Striking distance. Yeah, it's just like my dad's like striking distance again, obviously, and then whatever else you guys want. <laughs> and I was like, "Is there a movie where Steven Seagal breaks someone's elbows?" Because I, I want to get that oh, one. Oh man! And nice. then Steven oh, City Seagal. Slickers too. That's probably funny. Let's do that. Did you own this one on DVD? I mean, it, it's safe to assume I owned every movie that I ever saw. If I liked it on DVD. <laughs> yeah. Because I owned a lot that I didn't even like. I bet. <laughs> but I don't remember specifically. <laughs> yeah. That was back in the day. My kids don't understand that. It, you had to buy stuff just to see if you would like it. And if you didn't like it, well, now you still have it. Yeah, because I remember Screech getting mad at me when we lived together in Colorado. Because uh, he'd be like, he's like, dude, let's watch Event Horizon. I was like, I don't like that movie. It's scary. He's like, it's yours. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't like it. I don't want to watch it. I freaking love that movie. It's so terrifying. 
It's so freaking weird, dude. I don't. I'm, I mean, I have to like. I'm gonna have to psych myself up for it if we do it on the podcast. We're definitely really doing that terrifying. on the podcast. <laughs> we're, there, there's no doubt we're doing. It. I have so Grant many good from stories in from the that mirror. movie. God, it's so scary. You can't leave. But yeah, he'd be she like, "It's your movie. You. It's so stupid. To not even want to watch your own movies." Like, I don't want to. It's scary. <laughs> let's let's watch let's watch freaking Swingers again. If it makes you um, uh, happier at all, when I was going through to watch this movie, I had to take it out of the plastic to watch it. <laughs> um, so I apparently bought it and never watched it. Yeah, because I'll go back to when I, we were, cause we were in uh, Hammond like a, a week ago. We saw you guys. We hung out and went swimming. And like I have a bunch of DVDs at my parents' house still. And I'll be like, ooh, Buying the Cow. I have that on DVD. I don't even know if that movie, if you can find it anymore in the world. It's very I hard to find. a DVD copy of it. Yeah, I have yeah. it too. I have it like too. Just random shit. It's like, hey, French Stewart's in that. Remember him? <laughs> oh, man. You don't have the one with French Stewart and uh, Bill Bellamy, do you? What was that one called? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I probably did. God, if you have that one, I need it so and I can rip Jerry it. Jerry O'Connell? Yeah, no, not Jerry O'Connell. That was that was buying the cow. The one where yeah, what's the, where she the has Bill to, Bellamy? Yeah, yeah, and she has to. Uh, it's got uh, Bridget Sampras, and they get uh, they get married, and then uh, she turns out to be Cray Cray. Love stinks. Love stinks. He's like I'm tied sure up on the do. cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of those like crass kind of vaguely rom-com movies are probably going to be so bad when we rewatch them. Uh, we should definitely rewatch this. 1999. I mean, if we have to bump the matrix to do that, I think we probably could. <laughs> Dude, it did gross all of those 2.9 million dollars. Oh man. How did we even see that? That movie is so not well known that when I type Bill Bellamy French into my browser to try to get to French Stewart, it autofills French toast. There's more people trying to search Bill Bellamy French toast than trying, trying to find this movie. Oh man, that's freaking great, <laughs> dude! But that's how deep a cut that. Remember is. those old movies though, with uh, like Jason Biggs, with like uh, Boys and Girls, and like uh, Loser, yeah, Losers, and, like all of those. I hope we get to those. Yeah. dude, we're definitely. That's all in the. That's all in the late '90s, early 2000s. We're definitely gonna. Right, I'm saying like I don't want to get stuck doing the the pianist and not do a loser <laughs> because I like that. so much. I mean, I think we're going to probably do matrix and Titanic, but we'll also do loser and love stinks. And like, Oh uh, yeah. Like the I still say scotch. That we like that's <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember that. That was from until I just said that movie out loud. Dude, what the <laughs> hell is a scotch? Uh, how'd you rate this one to 10? No sevens. Uh, dude, this, uh, I don't know if I'm comparing it to the original or what. Uh, it landed as a seven for me, but you can't give sevens. Uh, so I went 6.5 because I don't feel like it, it It got an eight. So yeah, 6.5 for me. But it was funny though. 6.5 for me as well. I think because I watched it twice because I watched it once while I was working, just like had it on. And then I watched it again uh, when I could take notes. And I on the second watch, I realized like the first half, I really like, and it's really funny. And then the second yeah. half from like when they get stuck in the rain and they're all huddled up together and then right. they find the treasure, but it's not the real treasures of friends we made along the way. <laughs> and then they go back home, yeah. like all of that, which is like the last 40 minutes of the movie. I'm like, this part's kind of drags and it's not yeah. as funny. Yeah. Dude, even like the, uh, the part where what's his nuts saves his brother and jumps on the, even that whole like stagecoach saving, turn the mules right, at the, the last second. stampede. Like even the, yeah. that was like, it felt like it took. That's what I'm long. saying. I think that, I think that's like the entire third act of the movie, and I'm like, yeah, this is kind of not as yeah. much fun as the last one, right? And and, and I, I'm definitely comparing it to the other ones because as I'm I'm just th- like as stuff is happening, I'm just remembering freaking what's his name says yeah, and and uh, Curly's friend Cookie told us about that, and I was like, oh, Cookie, Cookie. like Lord, we give you Curly. <laughs> Try not to piss him off. Was that it? What else is there? I got chicken burning. <laughs> like I'm just remembering hilarious stuff, stuff from the first movie yeah, yeah. that's not in this one. <laughs> Uh, like scoop of chocolate, scoop of vanilla. Don't waste my time. Like there's just because yeah. there's only four people in this movie instead of a bunch. Instead I'm of an so ensemble, glad there's those not guys as much came funny back stuff. At the end too. I know. Me too. The guy that I always think is Newman, but is actually not him. Yeah, the not Newman from Bill, yeah. from uh, Billy Madison. Yeah. So we're both six and six and a half out of ten. That feels right for me. Like it's did okay. It's got some really funny parts. I'm happy to watch it. I watched it twice in 48 hours. Yeah. But I also it's not nearly as funny as the first. Do you one. want to know the um, Rotten Tomato score? I yeah, just looked it up. Fifteen percent Rotten Tomatoes. I was going to say, I feel like it's going to be bad because yeah, you got to really like, uh, like I, when I was searching for background stuff on this, I actually found a Reddit post. It was like, "Is City Slickers two one of the sequels that's funnier than the original?" And there was like thirty comments. They're like, "What? That movie's terrible." I, was like, <laughs> I like it, but it's not funnier than the original. Yeah, it's not terrible though. 
Let's do uh, scenes. What's your top three scenes? Number one. All right. First, uh, do, do you, how do you do your scenes, by the way? I meant to ask you this. Do you do yours in order of how they come up or in order of how they... I usually do them in the order they came up because as I'm watching the movie, I'll just I'll yeah. write down all the scenes that I think are like candidates and then I'll go back through and take them out. Yeah, I just so didn't know if you ranked read. them after that and you go, I like, don't rank I give them. you number three first order. and then go build up to number one. I don't know if you did yeah. that. The very first scene, um, not the scene where he's dreaming, uh, even though that is freaking weird. Um, the, the first scene where he wakes up and lays back down and answers the phone on his birthday um, yeah, and his mom's and calling. And his mom's calling, and he's mouthing the words while the mom's doing it. And it's like, it's yeah. September 8th, 1952. And even like the laughs and the breaths, he's doing those. Uh, so you know they just like recorded the mom saying that story, and then he just listened to it over and over and memorized it. I thought that was hilarious. And the fact that the dad comes I didn't in, like that one. I didn't like that one that much because it's liter- it's not a callback to the first no, movie. It's, the it's same, literally the exact same, same bit same again. Thing. When people like lip syncing, the lip sync battles, just anytime somebody looks like they're not supposed to have that voice, fantastic. And he does a great job at mouthing the words. And he goes back and forth with his dad. Ah, it's just great. Also, uh, the fact that he's 40 and I'm 45, that's... That's brutal. Uh, well, cause I was looking it up because I was like, is he actually 40 or is he he's Hollywood be a saying older. he's 40? Yeah, he's probably. Because he's he's 76 five. right now, so he would have been 46. 46. In the filming of this movie, which felt right to me. Like, he's 46. He's claiming that he's just turning 40. I was like, I don't know about that. But you could, have you seen the stuff, like the memes and stuff going around where it's like, here's all the people in Cheers that were 30 when the when the show started. Like, freaking, uh, what's, uh, what's the Toy Story pig? Uh, John uh, Rath- Rath- Ratzenberger, Ratzenberger, Ratzenberger. That's in Cheers. It's like in the first season of that show, he's like thirty, but he looks like he's fifty. Yeah, hey, just people used to look way, people used to look way older. Yeah, yeah, he definitely looks older. Cat says no, he didn't look older. She was like, yeah, he looks like us. I'm, you're forty five, he's forty. I'm like, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, he's in way better shape than both of us, but he's our also our, our, our age. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's his hair. Something about him makes him look older. He's got the freaking curly, like receding hairline, yeah. and uh, I don't know. But I, that's like uh, my number one complaint about that is we talked about this lethal weapon when Same when freaking Danny Glover's I'm getting too old for this shit. Right. And he's forty one. Yeah, it's like, dude, I'm also getting too old for this shit, but not just like being alive in the world, not being a um, famous movie star. Yes, that's for sure. So I didn't like that one as much because it was literally just exactly from the first. Yeah, movie. I just loved it so much from the first one. I had to throw it in there again. Plus, I didn't have a lot of scenes. I had Phil and Mitch in the library. Oh, man. A million dollars. Because they're trying to figure out, like, they, he finds the map inside of Curly's hat, and it's got a, it's got treasure on it, and Phil's, like, his life is still shitty. And then John Lovitz is Billy Crystal's idiot brother. His life is shitty. And they're like, all right, we'll go on a treasure hunt. Yeah. We'll go find the gold. And they're trying to figure out if it's real. And they're, like, looking at freaking microfilm, and they keep getting excited. $20 million in the library and keep shushing them. Yeah. And, and dude, that bit they was killing me because they kept – Getting excited, and she kept shushing him. <laughs> I have you ever been in a library where somebody shushes you like that? I have not. I was thinking actually because the my my job at Vanderbilt now is in the Vanderbilt Library, and I don't think you're even supposed to be quiet there unless you're specifically in a room that says like reading room, be quiet. Yeah, like, I don't even think you have to be quiet in libraries anymore unless it says like be quiet in this room. And there, I don't. I guess I mean people have headphones. You can just block all that out now. You don't need. But that was like the uh, that I, th- I was thinking about Indiana Jones uh, in the freaking when he's doing that, he's like slamming the thing on the floor oh, yeah. right as the person stamping the books, yeah, yeah. like that library scene for some reason. <laughs> uh, uh, just to show you, I have kids. I kept thinking of Monsters University when they go into the uh, library there on the <laughs> campus. Shout out Billy Crystal. The yeah, Billy Crystal again. The second scene that I had is when they meet um, uh, Lovitz first gets there. Uh, Mitch comes home and he brings Phil with him. And um, <laughs> the wife, as soon as he walks in, uh, Billy Crystal's wife is uh, out, just stupid mad because um, she already uh, knows that John Lovitz is there. And she she's not saying John Lovitz's name. She's not saying Glenn. So she's just like, I can't believe you let him over here. And she thought it was Phil the whole time. And then the whole 
thing when John Lovitz shows up and he's sits down and he's got the toe out of the sock and he's talking about the cow, just the whole thing. Fantastic. Cause you, every time you introduce John Lovitz to a movie, you know, it's going to be great. I had that one, uh, in my quotes, obviously, yeah, I have that but too. that was, so what happened was like, there were a couple of scenes that had a bunch of quotes that I really liked yeah. and I had to f- pick, like, do I pick my favorite of these quotes for my quotes or do I just put the whole, the whole thing scene. in there as yeah. a scene? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's a great one because it's freaking John Lovitz. His his wife hates him because he's his idiot brother. Yeah, he's and always he's, asking for money. He asked the son for money. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's borrowing money. He's showing up unannounced. And he's freaking doing Godfather quotes. Oh god, <laughs> Godfather two quotes. <laughs> uh, that was that one was fantastic. Yeah, and but my next one was um, before they leave. They go out to wherever uh, Colorado or New Mexico, I think. And they're renting like horses and like a what freaking cover wagon, and they're <laughs> All just the like. Supplies. And Billy Crystal's talking to the like toothless cowboys that are renting the stuff. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't want to tell him. He's like, you guys got a lot of digging equipment. He's like, yeah, we're seismologists. Like, Do you know anything about seismology? And the guy's like, uh-uh. he's like great. He's like, so what happened was, he's like, these plates got all jammed up together, and what we have to do is we have to go dig down there in this particular igneous polygamous Jurassic Hasidic <laughs> region. <laughs> He's just smashing re- up all these friggin' words. We have words. to relieve and the I- pressure. And then what happens, <laughs> right, is Phil's walking out from the inside. Dude, and then, uh, well, and first the, like, the Yokel Cowboy's like, the guy's like, wow. He's like, well said. And, <laughs> And then Phil walks out with the other cowboy, and he's like, and then the guy's picture is, was in his hat. It's his dad buried the gold. He's freaking told him everything. Oh, man, the everything. whole story. Yeah. And, dude, and then Billy Crystal's like, "What, Phil, what would you tell me your whole life story? He's like, no, we we're just chatting. And then the cowboy's like, hey, listen, Phil, I wouldn't go back to Arlene <laughs> if I were you. That'd be like sticking your balls in a bear trap. Oh, man. Yeah, that was like great. That, that, that was freaking great. But then, like, they're getting ready to leave, and you, it just keeps getting more and more awkward. And Billy Crystal's like, well, we should go. We're parked in the handicapped spot. And the guy's just staring at him dead (laughs) silent. And he goes, gays in the military, your thoughts. (laughs) And he just kept saying, he just kept throwing out random one-liners. And the guys just kept staring at him. And it was friggin', it was delightful. Dude, those awkward silences is how I get in most of my trouble. Because I can't (laughs) just let the silence be. And I always fill it in. That's a huge problem for me. I mean, I wouldn't yell, uh, gays in the military, your (laughs) thoughts. But like... Yeah, dude, that's a good. That's a good. Just call. because there was no, there was no quote that was like good enough to make my quotes, but there was a bunch of really funny lines. All jam- like I laughed out loud like three times in that one. The like fact two, that Phil comes scene. out there and he's like, <laughs> and it's buried and it's and it's in his dad's <laughs> Like, yeah, it's great. It's great. And speaking of Phil, my last uh, scene is when uh, Phil has to stop and drop a deuce, <laughs> and uh, he feels a pinch on his butt and turns around. And sees a rattler, as a rattlesnake, um, and he tells uh, Mitch that he needs to suck the poison out. And uh, and he, dude, while him, while John Lovitz and Billy Crystal are arguing about who's going to suck the poison out of <laughs> Phil's ass, Phil is doing the best Daniel Stern, and he's just like, I can't see, my tongue's numb. My lips are numb. Dude, he's and he's, he's like, putting his hands in their faces. He's like, I can't see anything. <laughs> It's all going dark. And then right before he goes to suck the poison out and he's like getting his mouth ready <laughs> and he's like getting his lips ready to suck the poison out and he pulls his pants down and it's a cactus yeah, um, thorn or whatever. And then of course, friggin' Phil starts crying because he's emotionally unstable and he's like, you really care about me. And then John Lovitz is like, you never cared about me that much. I Dude, love John Lovitz goes, we used to be this close. <laughs> yeah. And he's and dude, crying. And, the, and then Billy Crystal, the thing crying. that made me laugh the most in that was when freaking Phil is like on his hands and knees and Billy Crystal's getting ready to suck the freaking snake venom, which turns out to not be snake venom. He just looks back yeah. and he just goes, don't tell my kids I died taking a shit. <laughs> Dude, I lost it. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. The fact that he was behind the boulder and he had the newspaper <laughs> out and all you could see was from like chest up, just newspaper out. He kicks the hat back just a little bit to start it off. Ah, oh, man. That's good and, stuff. Dude, he's – and he – Billy Crystal and John Lovitz are arguing about who's going to – he's like, he's your friend. And <laughs> Billy Crystal's like, I always do stuff for you. At one time I asked you to do something for me. <laughs> oh, God. 
That was friggin' great. Yeah, I'm not that's... sucking the poison out of anybody's ass. <laughs> and Billy Crystal's like, maybe if we wait until it gets up a little higher. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that uh, totally so doesn't work, uh, by the way. So you don't have to suck the poison out of anyone's ass. Don't worry. I wasn't going to. It was <laughs> <laughs> It was nice knowing you. This is what we get for candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I I'm, I know if it's me, you're not doing it because, like, it's been a good ride. But, like, what if it's right. your kid? Yeah, I can suck the poison out of my kid's ass, but you just said it doesn't work. So It doesn't work. I can saying. make more of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's Jake, he's pretty much adult size. He probably is going to be okay. Yeah, he's going to be fine. Because it's really about, like, I'm the, I'm at the point where, like, unless I'm in Australia, like, a poisonous snake here, I'm not saying I want to get stung, I'm not volunteering, but I probably would live through it. It just would be super unpleasant. Right. Like, there's shit in Australia that would just kill any one of us dead, which is why it's not high on my list of <laughs> It's a tiny ant, and it bites you on the ankle, and your uh, leg If you want people off. to visit your island, why don't you hop off and push it a little bit closer? <laughs> I feel like if I'm on a plane for 17 hours, they should at least have the decency to not speak English when I get there. <laughs> Oh, man. What's your third quote? I mean, your third, <laughs> my third, your third one, scene. My third one is the North is up. Oh, God. Dude, <laughs> I put that in my quotes. I just I couldn't decide which part of it to put in my quotes. I had to watch it twice. Dude, they're, they're freaking traveling, <laughs> and he's like, Billy Crystal has a map but no compass somehow, which is a big oversight. And he's yeah, like, it's because he bought north? four pounds of tortilla chips. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of jerky. And then Daniel Stern's like, North is up. He's like, what do you mean North is up? He's like, yeah, on the map, North is always up. He's like, so you think anytime you're going up, you're going North. <laughs> Dude, and this is, no, the best to me is when at the very, right at the beginning, he's like, all right, so we just got to figure out which, which way is North. And then Daniel Stern, just so matter of fact, he's like, up. He's like, up. Like, yeah. What do you mean up? Ah, oh, Christ. It was Dude, so and then funny, immediately dude. after that, the conversation is, he's like, John Lovitz jumps in. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, the sun sets in the east, right? And Billy Crystal goes, the sun sets in the west. <laughs> and John Lovitz goes, right, but we're in the west. So we're past where the sun sets. He's like, you can't be past where the sun sets. And if you think you can, and I'm standing due south of an idiot. <laughs> like, that's the, uh, dude. like, I couldn't, I couldn't boil that down to just one quote, but it's no, it's that's genius. I, the whole thing is in there. From which way is north <laughs> to, um, he, I'm standing directly south of an idiot. And he goes, which is down? He goes, right. <laughs> like, that's just three people all delivering brilliant lines. Like, that. I had Dude, to put that in When John Lovitz is like, give me the map. And he goes, yeah, let Magellan have a look. <laughs> I, Dude, I had to pause it. Like, I was laughing out loud because I just remember this part. And then we, I rewound it like three times to watch it, make sure I got all the lines that I wanted. <laughs> maybe you should have bought the, a compass instead of four pounds of tortilla <laughs> chips that's maybe the most memorable part of this movie because I know any, I mean people don't use maps anymore so you don't really need that a lot but it, like, right. you could do the north is up thing a bunch of times I have an upside down map uh, on my wall in the front of my classroom it's a world map all the words are right side up but you know everything's upside down <laughs> and the kids are like well which way is north and I was like the bottom of the map is north and they're like well map, north has to be up I was like why <laughs> Why does it have to be up? That's that's a fantastic scene. That's that's my, actually my first quote. It's yeah. So good. Uh, all right. Well, dude, let's just go to quotes. Let's do that one since that was your first quote. We just did it. That's dude. my first one. Yeah. You I could just watch that bit on YouTube and it's absolutely brilliant. That's what I was going to say. If I want to get the feeling of this movie, I watch that scene right there. That's it, freaking great. That scene to me is the same as uh, if I'm comparing it to something in the first movie, I'm comparing it to how did the VCR TV work? <laughs> like that's those two right there. Those are the two quintessential quotes for those. See, for those and they movies. and they brought that back in this one, but they, they did. didn't they didn't spend as much time on it. I actually loved that. It was just like it was during the montage. Yeah, like the music's playing, away. they're showing the map, and like there's a bunch of little interspersed pieces, and like one of its. Like it's him and Phil talking about. It. He's like, you don't have to tell the TV anything because you've already programmed the VCR. Like it's really short. I was <laughs> yeah. like, that's a great callback. Right, right, right. Yeah, dude. My first quote is uh, the cow's name is Norman. Yeah, I put that in there. Something wrong John with your Lovis cow. Is like, some, there's something wrong with your cow. I thought I would do some chores, so I thought milk the cow, and I reach under there and I'm pulling and I'm tugging. Nothing. And Billy Crystal says, the cow's name is Norman. You were pulling on his dick. And then John Lovitz goes, I think I'll go wash up. Dude, his comedian, that's how you know he's a comedian because yeah. his comedic timing to pause for just the right amount of time and go, I'm going to go wash up. Uh, dude, fantastic. 
That's yeah, dude, that was one of my quotes also. Lovitz's timing and delivery is always fantastic. What's your next one? My second quote was um, <laughs> when they're uh, talking about how cold it is and they're not going to make it. And Phil says, in case we don't make it and I die first, eat me. And Mitch is like, eat you? I don't even like talking to you on the phone. <laughs> oh, God, that's fantastic. I got to bring, like, there's some in here that I used to say all the time and I don't say anymore. And I'm definitely bringing it back. I can't wait to start saying, I don't even like talking to you on the phone. <laughs> uh, dude, I'm bringing it all back. That's, that's underrated. My, my second one is, an, the, the, so the cow's name is Norman. You were pulling on his dick. If we're talking about this movie, that's the yeah. quote that gets used the most, followed closely by this one. A million dollars, Mitch, a million dollars. A million dollars. A little louder, Phil. I don't think all the crack dealers heard you. Yeah. Which isn't even the funniest part of this movie, but it's just one that we did all the time. We said that constantly. Talking about this movie. So I had to put that on the list. Plus, anytime somebody said a million dollars, if somebody said a million dollars, like, we just just yelled it. In the same way that, like, if someone says 10 years, you go, 10 years, man! 10 years, man! Gross Point Blank, also 1999, I think. Oh, Do we have room for that? And the other one, Love Stinks? Stick around for five years and find out. (laughs) Um, dude, I put the million dollars Mitch as an honorable mention because I knew you were going to put it in there and yeah. I knew we said it all the time. Uh, but my last one is when, uh, uh Billy Crystal is complaining about his brother. Um, <laughs> and he's doing the whole bit where he's like saying a bunch of stuff about the person. And he says, he's behind me and his, like, yeah. he's behind me, isn't he? Like that whole bit. And he is going after him and he calls him the vice president of lazy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I use that all the time and I forgot it was from this. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I totally yeah. forgot about that. God. Vice this, president you can of tell lazy. Freaking Lil Gantz and Bob Lou Mandel are just brilliant at this type of stuff. Cause there's so many quotes in this movie that didn't make a lot of money that maybe nobody but me and you really likes. But well, this is the thing though. Like I can remember saying vice president of lazy a lot. I don't remember watching this movie that much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Was this one of those movies we had on VHS and we just ripped audio to a thing so we could listen to the audio? No, dude. Quotes? I think it just, I think it's just, just really smart quotes, like freaking yeah. stick in your, like I say all the time, like that guy is an absolute weapons grade moron, which is a line from Veep. Yeah. I've only watched Veep one time, but I'll never forget that line. Yeah. And I use it yeah, all the time. Yeah. A lot of yeah. times talking about politicians. <laughs> My third quote is freaking John Lovitz talking to Mitch. Mitch is like, what do you do? He's like, I have some sales a lot. I was an animal detective. He's like, what? <laughs> it's like a poodle's wife is cheating on him. And you need to get pictures. He's like, no, no. He's like, people lose their pets. They pay a big ransom. Billy Crystal's like, ransom? And Love is like, ransom is a bad choice of words. That's the word they used in court, but I'm still fighting it. <laughs> oh, man. You're John Lovitz. You almost sound like him when you say it. You're like, I, Dude, I, I forgot that that quote was even in this movie, and it killed. I had to watch it twice. Ransom is a bad choice of words. That's the word <laughs> they used you, in court. <laughs> you think he said that because of uh, like Ace Ventura had just come out? Wasn't that, that's this year. Yeah, yeah, that's the same I time. Know. I have no idea. I hope so because that would be great. Yeah, but God, dude, just love it. His delivery kills me, dude. When he was talking to Phil, I, I put one extra quote in here. He's, when he's talking to Phil, he's like, "Phil, how long has it been since you've been with a woman?" He's like, "Saturday. Saturday will be a year." Like, <laughs> dude, I I almost spit out my drink. I was, I don't and know Billy why. Billy Crystal's like, I would have brought a cake. <laughs> But again, ah, that just made me think of stuff from the first movie where it's – where he's like uh, – where he's talking – he's introducing himself to everyone else. He's like, yeah, it's my wife left me. He's thinking, of, thinking of shooting myself and <laughs> Billy Crystal's just like, his jacket's being made. Because <laughs> Bruno Kirby's got a freaking jacket with his company on the back. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go watch that movie again. Yeah, I'm definitely going to because I kept thinking about how much funny stuff happened in there. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, do there. Uh, you can tell this movie's got great quotes because we di- we didn't have a lot of overlap. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Characters, dude. I, I I hate to do it, but I just I just went chalk. Top three build. Freaking Billy yeah. Crystal, Daniel Stern, John Lovitz, because that's the whole movie, and every one of them is perfect. Yeah, they all, they killed it. Billy Crystal killed it. Uh, Daniel Stern's always funny, and John Lovitz always funny. Like they, I didn't put Jack Palance. Uh, I no. don't remember who I picked last time, but. I think I picked Jack Palance for the first one. He was great as Curly. This one, he's playing Curly's twin brother. He's just, I didn't like it as much. Duke. He's got a part. Duke. Duke. 
Yeah, dude, I did the same thing. Top three. You can't. You can't not pick those. And this, uh, I think Billy Crystal had the idea for the original City Slickers because he saw like a TV show about three friends who had like a midlife crisis and went scuba diving or something. And then he got, he pitched it, you know, Ganson Mendel wrote it. They did it, made a bunch of money. And like he, he and Daniel Stern both had so much fun in the first movie. Like Daniel Stern bought a freaking cattle ranch. Yeah. And Billy Crystal like bought his horse that he was in the movie and like. It's the same horse this time. Yeah. Yeah, he kept the horse until the horse died at the age of 27. Like, that's a serious commitment. Jeez, that's it's awesome. like buying a freaking parrot. They live to be 70. There's no chance. <laughs> I'm too old to own a parrot. I have to get my kid one because yeah. I don't have another 70 in me. Right. I don't think. I don't think I'm making it to 114. I just want to make it to do Love Stinks in 1999. <laughs> I think that's very achievable. <laughs> we got this. Yeah, you you might have to do that, like, with an oxygen tank. But yeah, I think totally we got fine. that. Five more years. We got it. But yeah, man, so they had so much fun doing this, and it kind of like did a little – it was a little Western resurgence. I mean I don't think that like Tombstone was like, ooh, that City Slickers was fun. We should do Tombstone. Right. But we've done a bunch of Westerns, and we have more – like we did freaking Wyatt Earp at Tombstone, and what's the – Clint Eastwood one that was boring as shit that everyone loves? <laughs> Unforgiven. Unforgiven, yeah. Dude, people love yeah. Unforgiven. People are still upset that we didn't love Unforgiven. I, dude, I just don't like Westerns. I've ridden yeah. a horse like four times in my life, and every single time I was like, this oat is bag. horrible. I got my own bag now. No, dude, seriously, it was horrible. I was like, is my chode supposed to hurt this much? Why? It just feels like it's horrible. Horrible. You know it's bad when you're thinking to yourself, it would be better if I just walked myself. <laughs> Yeah. Even though I'm riding, it's actually more uncomfortable than if I just walked myself. <laughs> yeah, just walk and hold the reins. <laughs> this is horrible. Yeah, I like riding horses and I like westerns, but I don't like uh, the serious anti-hero make me think about stuff. I just like when they're funny or when there's a lot of shooting. Yeah. Like Quick and the Dead. I like that one. No moral stories, just people shooting each other. I like Just that. Everybody, di- everybody dying and everybody shooting. That's what I'm shooting. saying. That's a great yeah. time. Yeah, dude, I don't know what to s- what else to say about these actors. Because they're awesome. And they did a great yeah. job. And that's it, dude. They're the only ones in the movie. I mean, his family comes back, his fake acting wife, and also his real daughter playing his imaginary acting daughter. Yeah. Like, the son is not in there because the son was, remember? Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, I saw it. Did you see the thing on, oh, I saw it on IMDb. Um, Norman's voice. No. For the thing was uh, Frank Welker. That's the guy who does Scooby-Doo and stuff. Oh, nice. Well, he does a whole bunch of people, like Megatron and all kinds of stuff. But, like, uh, he's the Scooby-Doo guy. Yeah. Um, that was Norman's voice. Did you see that the woman playing his um, assistant or secretary or whatever at the radio station, uh, her name is Beth Grant? and yeah, she was in Speed. Sp- yeah, she's in Speed. She had so a good, she's a, she had a good she had a pretty, day that day. She had huh? a pretty good June. This, yeah. this weekend released two movies that she was in. Yeah, and she and, was uh, a pretty big part bad. in both of them. I, every time I see that lady, I think of Speed. Yeah. Because she's so dumb. <laughs> why'd she even go yeah. for the door yeah why why'd you get blown up like that uh you knew he was watching pop quiz do you want to, writers and directors do Lowell Gans and Bob Lou Mandel we talked about him a lot when we did the first one we should talk yeah. about him again because that was four years ago and yeah. no one needs to go back but like just the two of them together night shift splash spies like us gung-ho vibes gung-ho. parenthood city slickers mr saturday night a league of their a own of their own Greedy, City Slickers 2, Forget Paris, Multiplicity, Ed TV, Multiplicity. Where the Heart Is, Robots, Fever Pitch. That's, yeah. I don't, those are not all my favorite movies, but some of my favorite comedies are on that list. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of my uh, favorites are on there. That's a pretty good run, too. Yeah. That's from 82 to uh, Where the Heart Is in 2000. So 2010. Yeah, from, 80 One, two, to, from three, 80 to 1980 to 2000, there's some incredible movies in there. Dude, 11 of the 14 movies from 82 to 2000 are my jam. Well, dude, not only that, but like creator of Joni Loves Chachi, creator of Laverne and Shirley, writer on Happy Days, writer on The Odd Couple. Like these, That's uh, crazy. Dudes freaking go way back. They do some good work. And you can tell between the, – they're, they're both from Queens. Jewish guys from Queens. Billy yeah. Crystal, Jewish guy, probably yeah. also from Queens. Definitely from New York. Yeah. Like, no wonder they freaking love working together. He was initially raised in the Bronx. Billy Crystal. He was raised in the Bronx, but he, but it, no. It was represents Brooklyn. What's the LL Cool J line? Oh, uh, I don't know. Is he still alive? From, from doing it. LL Cool J? Yeah. Uh, represent Queens, raised out in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. Something like go. that. <laughs> yeah. From that, classic, from that classic song, Doing It. 
<laughs> do it. Hello, Cool J. Which they don't even have a clean version of. Because <laughs> Jake said something, oh, man, this song's so dirty. I was like, let me show you another dirty song. And I was just only going to show him the beginning. And I was like, let me just find the clean version. You'll see how much is actually left out. They don't have a clean version. The album has a clean version. It's dirty. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like dirty. Went, nah. And no, the, no sense there's no to way, clean up like, doing it. How are you going to take out every single uh, sexual <laughs> moan in the background throughout the whole song? Well, that's like that's like the freaking Patton Oswalt. It's like you can't say these words, but you can also say, I've got my goof juice all over you. And like, <laughs> that's totally fine. Like all the Bobby Brown songs. It's like, hey, just use a bunch of euphemisms that are not confusing at all. Those right. are totally fine to play on radio. Oh, um, man. Kids it's going to look like a rat in a rainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> With my hula fills your... <laughs> the uh, director Paul Weiland uh, the original director was Ron Underwood for the first one they get Paul Weiland for this one he did a bunch of commercials he didn't do a lot of movies I think he only did like five or six yeah I, I remember reading he did some stuff with Mr. Bean I think he did Mr. Bean yeah he did yeah. Black Adder but yeah he didn't do That's a lot of movies Ron Atkinson too yeah I don't know enough about directors to know if he did a good job or not a good job i didn't notice it in this case which i would say means good job yeah that's what i was gonna say if we didn't notice that it sucks then it's probably a good job yeah but i do want to mention the music mark shaman who did Killed the first again. movie and god the free i mean it's the same music it's the same music it's the same, yeah, score, same score as the first movie but it's great it's freaking fantastic uh, i'd like to just uh, uh, put an exclamation point on that by saying like in that beginning part when he's having his dream and he's like on the horse you know what i'm talking about before he sees curly's um grave or whatever yep. and he's on the horse and the horse is doing the thing where it's spinning around and lifting its legs up and shit like right. that um that da, na, 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 like that whole score is yeah, playing motif. and and i was like god lee this guy is good he's really he's good. fantastic man and i wish that i had had a little bit more time because we've I've gotten in touch with Mark Shaman before to ask him. I asked him to come and talk to us about Sister Act. Sister Act, and he put us in touch with Mervyn Warren, who did all the choir arrangements for Sister Act, to who we that were able great. to talk to. But Mark Shaman was like, "Hey, I'm busy doing stuff on Broadway right now, but I will I'll, if I have time, I'll talk to you about yeah. another movie." So I would have I would have liked to have reached out to him just to go like, "Dude, this score is awesome. Talk about so that. Good. So like, good. give us ten minutes and tell us why it's so awesome." And it's the same thing like the the beginning credits where they're kind of cartoon drawn. Yeah. And it's the score. It's like, that's, you don't see that anymore. And I know your kids, like, they don't want to sit through 90 seconds of that before stuff starts, but I loved it. They do not. Yeah. I do. If it's the score is good like that, I'll take it every time. Yeah, man. Do you have any other stuff for the, like, production side of things? I, I got no more of that and no more good. I told you all my stuff. The only thing I had in the worst was Old Tech Alert. Yeah. I have two things. What'd you write down? The first one, I almost had it on my list of quotes where Billy Crystal says, He's talking to his wife and he says, don't call the hotel, call the cellular. The switchboard blew up. Call my yeah, cellular. Su- he lied. They're supposed to be in Vegas for a convention. They're really out in the desert looking for gold. Yeah. And he's like, he told his wife, he's like, yeah, the switchboard at the hotel blew up. They don't even know. Big electrical surge. He's like, so don't call the hotel. Just call the cellular. I'll have it with me the whole time. And I was like, this movie's <laughs> so old. He had to make sure his wife, there's no chance that if you were traveling that your significant other would try to call, call the, the look hotel. up the number for the hotel, call the front desk, ask for your name, and then get to have it ring the phone in the room. No one yes. would ever – it would never even occur. If you called your phone and they and you didn't answer, I don't even think someone would think of that. <laughs> I know if somebody calls my hotel room, I'm not answering that phone. Uh, I am because it's probably the front desk and <laughs> like it's finally time they're going to bring me my – Answer your telephone. <laughs> answer your telephone. <laughs> But yeah, man, I love that they had to have a specific like plot point where he explained yeah. to his wife that she couldn't call the hotel. I was like, dude, I don't think people understand that that was a thing that you used to do. Yeah, and, and you, he don't wanna, giant you don't want to use your, cell out, your cellular out there because the no, Rome minutes would be killing you. Just yeah, the you other old like, tech I wrote down was – uh, because John Lovitz was over and his wife was complaining. She's like, yeah, he's already uh, asked me for money and made a bunch of long-distance phone calls. <laughs> And I was like, long distance. I remember that. You had to dial a one first and the area code. And or remember when? Uh, oh yeah, you could dial ten ten two twenty, and then the long distance is not as expensive. That was like revolutionary. Yeah, I remember. All it was like another 10, service 10, that you would dial, and then you would dial the number, and it was like they gave you cheaper long distance phone calls. But dude, back in the day, it was like my cousins all lived in Denham Springs, and we lived in Hammond. It's only thirty minutes away, but that was a different area code. That shit was long distance. So That's it was like, long Don't distance call your phone cousins. Calls. Yeah, under yeah. no circumstance can you call your grandparents yeah. or your cousins 
Right. That's why my when we left my grandma's house, and she'd be like, "All right, it was good seeing y'all. Let the phone ring twice when y'all get home." <laughs> so like she would let. So that's how we would let yeah, her dude, know that we were it's like home. Secret agent shit. Because if you pick up the phone, you got charged. But you just like do this. You call into a certain number of rings. It's like I'm sure that's them. It's probably fine. We found ways around it. <laughs> we, were, we were so smart. So I didn't have any worst scenes or worst and effects. Me either. me either. Daniel Stern is still wearing glasses that are not actually corrective. It's just glass, clear glass. Yeah. Which I don't like, but it wasn't as noticeable this time. I think they were careful to like with what angles they filmed. Yeah. Also, the rain looked fine. Yeah. Yeah. They I improved a couple things we complained about from the first one. It didn't seem to help the box office, but <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. The fact that he had an old school Motorola flip cellular phone with the antenna that you had to pull out yeah. on his hip through while he's riding this horse was fantastic. And when it broke, he was like, "She can't get in touch with me." And he held it up, and there were just the guts of the phone were sticking all out. Uh, that's not how that works now. Uh, not only is that not how the hat works, but uh, Billy Crystal was when they were in Vegas. He was talking to Duke at the end, and he currently he was saying stuff about Vegas. He's like, "Yeah, he's like, I don't know, buffets. People love the buffets. Three ninety five, all you can eat, dude. Uh, that's not how much it is anymore. They don't have like, those anymore. We were. Y- you can't even find a buffet in Vegas. They're thirty bucks at least, even if those it's are like, the cheap. And those are it. the cheap ones. That's what I'm saying. Like, and that ends the- up being like Golden Corral style buffet. Yeah, if you want the good buffets in Vegas, like it's probably going to be sixty bucks a person. Like you should just go to you should just buy food. So when we went to go see Boys to Men, they were at the um, uh, Caesar's Palace. So I asked the guy at the front desk, I was like, "Yo, where's the best buffet?" And he was like, "Caesar's Palace has the best buffet." I was like, "Sweet, we'll just wait until the night that we're going to see Boys to Men, and we'll eat there first. And the guy's like, "Yeah, get there early because sometimes the line's long, and also it's a lot of food. You don't want to rush and then be full for your concert." I was like, "That's a really good call, sir." So we get there at like four thirty and get in line hour to get to the front. We get to the front, and I was like, two buffets, please." And the lady goes, "Would you like champagne and, and beer?" I'm like, "No, no, just plates and forks, thank you." Uh, and, uh, it was $165. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I just looked it up. The buffet at the win, 16 live action cooking stations with rotisserie grilled steak, coast to coast seafood, eggs, Benedict, Latin street food station, 90 delicious dishes. And the brunch starts at fifty four ninety nine for adults. And if you want to get unlimited mimosas and beer and wine, it's an extra $33. That's what I'm saying. Per person. 88 yeah. bucks for that particular dude it was 80 something dollars a piece for us no it was great and it was really really good yeah i'm not saying it's not good but you gotta you gotta be ready to eat yeah i wish i would have had more time yeah the bacchanal buffet at caesar's palace weekdays 79.99 weekends 84 dollars. 84 there you go <laughs> dude it's it's so huge though and there's so much stuff yeah dude but if, if you don't get there when it opens and post up all day you're not gonna get your money's worth <laughs> No, I'm never getting my money's worth. I'm never going to be able to eat eighty-eight dollars worth of food. <laughs> That's like two whole crab legs, um, <laughs> dude. Jake asked when we were going to go get crab legs because you were in town, and that's the last time he went, or something. Well, that's the last time we talked about it. And I told him you got to look it up, and he came across an article where it says in like twenty-five years there won't be any more crab legs left. Yeah, and all I could think about was every time we like tried to open the crab leg and it wouldn't <laughs> open, and we were like, "Yep, that whole plate's gone. Go get more. <laughs> try to find a better set." I'm not a Native American. Is that? <laughs> I'm not going to try to get every little piece. Of is me. that from overfishing, or is it because the oceans are too hot for crabs to live? Because I've yes. read both. Yes. As I was going to say. So only part of that is from us going like, couldn't crack that one in the trash. It goes, <laughs> bring me more. Bring me, take that whole fist and throw it away. I need five more. It's just me. Nobody else is coming behind me. Sorry, kids. Yeah. yeah. Figure out close, how to eat Close the door crab. behind you. I'm pulling up the ladder. <laughs> but yeah, Always steer clear of the ladder, tech. boss. <laughs> <laughs> Three ninety five for the for the buffet is. So. Yeah, that was, dude. But, but wait, when I, so after you graduated in Montana, we met in Vegas. Yeah, uh, there was a cheap buffet. It was like eleven something that I yeah. There was like at. a there was like a Fremont buffet, and it was like yeah, ten bucks or something like that. There probably are some off the strip buffets, but the ones that like the Wynn, Caesar's Palace, all, oh. those are all like eighty bucks a person now. Jeez, crazy! But we thanks, went to one of those. We went to one of those button. fancy buffets with my college buddies at yeah. that point in time, and it was like unlimited beer and mimosas because we did that. We went in there early in the morning and we paid whatever like twenty five thirty bucks, and we sat there for like four hours. 
Yeah, just like, drink. we like sat through shift changes. Like the there were so many empty buckets of beers, they had to like <laughs> bring a cart by to bring them away. And no one was like, "You guys are dicks." Everyone's like, "Yeah, we've got new prime rib coming up in just a minute." Like, totally <laughs> you need, fine what kind that. of pizza you want? We'll make it special. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the lady did make me a pie because she said I had pretty <laughs> eyes, which was great. I don't know what I was supposed to do with that whole pie she gave me. I just left it on the table. Yeah. <laughs> just bring it, bring it to the concert and eat it. No. Yeah. <laughs> Offer it around. That's not weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Let's do five questions. Is it okay for kids? Uh, like mild language. So I, I would think like my six-year-old was watching it in the beginning and then there's a little um, uh, sexual stuff in the very beginning with Mitch and his wife. Yeah. That was kind of blatant. Uh, but other than that, it's fine. Yeah. So if your kid can handle hearing, I'm going to put my sink my fingernails into those supple ass cheeks or whatever she says over the speakerphone, <laughs> then you're fine. Well, we did miss when we talked about awards that it was nominated for a Razzie for worst remake. Oh yeah. Sorry. But it didn't win. So I saw, I saw that. It's an honor to be nominated. Yeah, man. That's Would this movie get made not. if it were pitched now? I don't know if, I mean, they just remade Twister, which seems Twisters. like a kind of similar <laughs> movie to this for some reason. I don't know. Cause people, there's cows and people are outside. <laughs> Cow. <laughs> um, it, yeah, dude, I don't like, you would have to have a lot of updates. Don't you think? I honestly don't know. But if, if, if I heard that they were going to reboot city slickers, I think I would be like, if it's someone that I like that's in that, I'm actually kind of excited. We'll see you on my, on my uh, recast. Yeah. Like if Andy Samberg like announces that he's redoing city slickers, I'd be like, Oh, that could be cool. Yeah. I'd probably, yeah, yeah. probably be a lot of dick and fart jokes, but like, I'll go see that. <laughs> I don't see Andy Samberg riding a horse, but maybe. <laughs> uh, well, that's I think that's why it's funny. It was a fish out of water thing. That was how, that was how they right, were in right. the first one. Yeah, yeah. Would it be a movie or TV show? I feel like movie. It's got to be a movie. I don't want to yeah. watch them search for a treasure this whole time. <laughs> like a National Treasure, the TV show. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dad, did you got some recasting? Uh, yeah, all right. So uh, Duke Washburn is played by Sam Elliott Yeah. Um, because he's an old cowboy. For Phil, uh, I wanted Paul Rudd. Yeah. And for Glenn, I wanted Jason Bateman. And <laughs> then uh, Mitch Robbins. Dude, I couldn't come up with anybody. And for some reason, I keep coming back to Steve Carell. Yeah. Um, and I really like him, but I just don't know that he could be the Billy Crystal uh, type character. But I think he could be, uh, I don't know. I think he could be funny. Um I couldn't come up with anybody for Mitch for the lead. Yeah. But I, I definitely want Paul Rudd, Jason Bateman, and Sam Elliott. I gave mine away already. I wasn't joking. I actually think Andy Samberg would be good casting for this. He's he's kind of <laughs> like Billy Crystal. He's not he's like a little he's not like a big guy like Billy Crystal yeah, making yeah. jokes about it. He's not that tall. Right. And I think he would it'd be a little bit against type for him. Like I'm a city guy, I wear board shorts a lot of the time, and now it's like I gotta learn how to ride a horse. This sucks. Right, right, right. Um I guess if it's number two, it's not really like I'm talking about rebooting the first one, but really we're talking about the second. Yeah. Actually, I think that would be pretty good. It's all white people, which sucks, but uh, yeah, yeah. The this is all white people too. We should we should have changed it. I know. Well, the original, the first one had the big ensemble cast, and there was there was more variety than that. But this the, this key three that's coming back, is obviously, yeah, those dudes. Yeah, man, I think that's pretty good. I would actually love to figure out a way to get one of these guys back in here because they're all now in their seventies. But like Sam Elliott is such better casting for Jack Palance than any of these three, right? Like, can you imagine John Lovitz playing the playing Duke in this one, <laughs> <laughs> trying to be intimidating? Oh, you shut up! It stinks. <laughs> I mean, I wonder what she cooks like. Naked. Naked. <laughs> uh, all right. So, can you watch and enjoy this movie in twenty twenty four? Yeah, man, I watched it twice. It's and it is really funny. It's not as good yeah. as the first one, but uh, it's very enjoyable. I had to rent it. I couldn't find it streaming anywhere. I had to rent it from the box under my bed full of DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> you had to remove it from the plastic wrap and I had put to it in your DVD player that it. you just discovered. Yeah. What's the next movie? I don't have that. Hang on. Let me pull it up. Oh, man. IQ. <laughs> next up, IQ. I can't uh, wait. I freaking love that movie. Dude, who's in that? Tim Robbins? Tim Robbins, Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan. Walter Matthau. Oh, oh Walter oh, Matthau. It's so good. I freaking love Walter Matthau. So this is, I can't wait to watch it again. I hope it doesn't suck. Yeah. It's going to be funny. And it'll be uh, something fun right before we do uh, another dinger of Legends of the Fall. 
<laughs> I can't wait for that because I know how angry you get when uh, all the people are outside the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm i just very excited to go. Dude, it's not the same as uh, a river runs through it. And you're just going to be I, fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Fairly sure. <laughs> Because I'm looking at the pictures right now and everybody's wearing hats standing in front of Ford Model T's out in a freaking meadow, dude. I don't know. Yeah. It might be. We'll see. Um, all right. Next up, next movie will come out on Patreon probably be about a week after this will be Cocktail. Tom Cruise, oh, Elizabeth Shue. God. I can't wait for that. It's got a fantastic soundtrack. Jeff thinks it's terrible. It might be. Uh, Did you watch it yet? That one yet? No, I haven't. Oh, that's why you're so I like excited. it. I'm excited. Uh, and then next episode on the main feed will be IQ, the romantic comedy about Albert Einstein. Yes. I, I like how we have to put a colon and say that at the end because nobody knows what that movie is. Do You absolutely have to explain. If you just go like, because people are like, what are you guys doing next on the podcast? I promise if I say IQ, everyone will go, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just glad we're doing it because I like it. Yeah, dude, I'm excited. I love a rom-com and all the people in it are awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else? Nope. Vaya con cool. Dios. Vaya con Dios. Thanks for listening to Movie Life Crisis. Please subscribe, rate, and review. And remember, don't drive angry.